Hello and welcome back to another episode of Change of Raiment. This is episode 19. And we are so very excited because we have two very special guests with us today. Two young women who I will introduce shortly. Now let me just first say that we have been trying to get this interview with these two young ladies for a very long time. And for one reason or another, every time we would schedule to uh, record and to sh for them to share their testimony, there have been setbacks, there's been postponements, rescheduling, but we praise God that today it is finally happening and you all will be truly, truly blessed. And the mere fact that it was such a struggle to uh, put all of our schedules together to be able to make this recording happen, I know that there is something that will be shared in this presentation that will cause individuals to really have a breakthrough and to really, really be encouraged and blessed. And so the enemy, for whatever reason, did not want them to share their testimonies, but we know that God is much stronger and God is much greater than the enemy. So I'm going to introduce them right after we pray. So if you would, please bow your heads with us for a word of prayer at this time. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to share your goodness and to share our testimonies that will encourage others from every demographic and walk of life, that they can be obedient to you in every area of their lives, including that of dress reform. So we ask that as we share that your name and your name alone will be glorified and that the listeners will also be convicted and that that conviction will lead to true surrender and conversion. We thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we have with us today, like I said, two young people, two of our youth that have been following the path of dress reform, and we are so grateful to have them, one of which happens to be my cousin. But they are both very intelligent, driven, spiritual, virtuous young sisters of Christ, and I am privileged to have them here sitting with me on Change of Raiment. So I thank you both so very much, and most importantly, they love the Lord, they're very active in service and they love evangelism. And so when I asked them to come on Change of Raiment, there was no hesitation. They didn't say, well, I'll get back with you, Sister Hillary. Let me pray about it immediately. They said, you know what? We're going to share our testimony. So thank you once again for being here. And we are going to actually start with Maya. Thank you for being here once again. And I'm going to ask you to please introduce yourself so our viewers can get to know you if they don't know you already. Um, and tell us a little bit about your background, please. Okay. So once again, my name is Maya. Um, I grew up Seventh-day Adventist. You know, I was in the church. We were in a present truth church, but we were just living like a regular Christian life, going to church on Sabbath. Then the rest of the week, it's whatever we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a household with mainly boys. I have all brothers. Okay. And my start of dress reform didn't come till I would say a few years ago for me mm -hmm. but I grew up mainly wearing pants um, shorts yes. I only wore dresses or skirts when I was going to church or if it was for a special event mm -hmm. and that was pretty much how I grew up and I was very much a tomboy when I grew up also okay well with all the brothers and yes. how many brothers do you I have? have three brothers okay three but brothers three blood brothers but I also grew up a lot in around a lot of boys a lot of males like that. Mm -hmm. okay all right, Paris. All right, so my name is Paris, and similar to Maya, I have a lot of, well, males in my house as well. I have two brothers, of course, and then there's my dad in the home. So we both have that male um, presence at home. So I was born and raised SDA as well, but not reformed or present truth about until about 2019, personally, even though we started before, but everything is a personal journey. So for me, it wasn't until 2019. Um, I am from the tropics. So I grew up in Jamaica. So, you know, a lot of sleeveless, a lot of shorts, just doing your own thing, wear what you want, mm -hmm. of course. So I'm very new to this um, dress reform journey, and God has been helping me. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you both for sharing. Now we know a little bit about you. And um, we've had guests on Change of Raiment before. We've had um, Radisha and Diamond. We've had Chanel and Kathleen. We've also had Keishel. And I'm just noticing a common thread between all of um, our guests, with exception to Sister Keishel. 
all of us were raised as Seventh-day Adventists, but yet, unfortunately, none of us were exposed to dress reform until our teenage years later in life, right? And I find that to be very tragic. It's very sad because it's in the books. It's in, of course, the Bible, but it's in the spirit of prophecy. And it's just like there's a, almost a dearth in our church. There's a famine yes. for these reforms. And it's not just dress reform, but um, health reform, whatever else other reform there yes. is, there's just no education. There's no teaching. And so I'm admonishing um, churches out there and individuals that you know, are serious about the Lord and serious about his work to, you know, have a women's ministry that isn't just a group of women getting together for social reasons, but mm. study the books together, pray, read the testimonies. Um, I had recommended the book, Thy Nakedness, pray about it and encourage one another, especially the older uh, sisters, you know, like we're told in Titus chapter two, I believe that the aged women likewise, and this is verse three, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accuser, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women. And I believe that if we had such ministries in our churches, you know, where we had some of the older, more experienced women that are following, of course, um, biblical dress reform and other reforms to actually sit down and mentor the young people, you know, we wouldn't have to wait till we're 18, 19, 20, or whatever age you are to be first exposed to dress reform because it's there all along. And also ministers, you know, a, a call to you as well that you should be teaching it also um, to your congregants from the pulpit because a lot more people would follow if they knew. Most of us, you know, mm. we grew up ignorantly, like you said, wearing yes. pants, wearing sleeveless, wearing revealing clothing that weren't according to dress reform. And it's like when we first introduce it, it, when we're first introduced to it, it hits us in the face. Right. Wow, mm -hmm. really? But why are so many other people, you know, not following if this is in our books? But anyway, I digress on that point and we'll get back to our questions here. So um, Maya, we'll begin with you again. Do you first remember when you were first, the very first time you were introduced to the message of dress reform? Uh, was it via sermon? Was it your parents? Was it a friend? Do you remember how old you were at the time and what was your initial reaction? Okay, so I don't remember the exact first moment okay. that I was introduced to dress reform, but I do remember growing, I would say maybe around the age of 14 okay. or so, or maybe I was 13. We used to come to um, the the Sabbath that you guys would be here in Atlanta. We would come yeah. and stay there, you know, listen. But during that time, I wasn't really focused on that. So I would come, I'll listen, but my mind was somewhere else. So I've heard like bits and pieces of dress okay. reform, but I never actually studied for myself. I never went back and read anything. Mm -hmm. It was just, okay, I've heard it. That was it. And I pushed it to the side. Mm -hmm. um, I would say recently when I was living in Guyana, I was overseas for about over a year. And when I first got there, I was wearing pants. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very comfortable with what I had on. And my dad was like, you're not wearing that anymore. He was like, you're gonna be wearing skirts and you're gonna be wearing dresses. And of course I rebelled immediately. Mm -hmm. I did not wanna hear that because I'm like, where's this coming from? It was fine all this time, now right, I have right. to change up my dress. And of course I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So I was just very rebellious. Um, I would throw on the skirt sometimes and then sometimes I would just leave the house in shorts because we were living in a tropical area at the time okay. too, so it's, it's warm. Yes, yes. So I have on my short sleeve, um, my cut shirts and my shorts and I was comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I started wearing the skirts and eventually we made the full switch. It was me and my mother at the same okay. time. We both did it together and it was hard for both of us because my mom is also a town boy. So <laughs> we both struggled a lot with changing up um, our dress. Mm -hmm. So we started wearing the skirts and I actually decided now to read for myself and to understand now why am I wearing why? skirts? Mm -hmm. Am I just doing it because my dad told me to right. or because it's something that I know I should be doing? So I started doing my studying and realized, okay, this is something I need to be doing. And during that time also, I was struggling with music. Mm -hmm. And both of those things came to me at the same time. Um, I was really struggling hard with music. I listened to all types of music. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for me because I'm like, okay, I gotta change my dress. But then I also realized I need to change what I listen to. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a full 180 that I had to do and just 
um, learning and studying and just getting closer to God and, and my understanding of why I'm a Seventh-day Adventist and why do I need to dress this way. Wow, and that's wow. very important what you mentioned, Maya, because so many, especially young people, when they're told to do something, they do it because their parents mm -hmm. tell them, but it's a blessing that you actually, at your age, went back and studied so you know why you're doing it. You're not just doing it because daddy said so or because the people I'm around are doing it, but you actually looked for the why am I doing this? Is this really biblical? Is it salvific? And once you studied for yourself, it makes it so much easier because you realize it's not coming from a man. It's coming from God himself. And I imagine while you were in Guyana, you were doing some manual labor, yes, right? A were. lot of manual it was, labor. It was very hot. So, and it was yes. hard to adjust to wearing um, dresses, especially because I know, like, we're supposed to be clothed, right. too. So I had to kind of think, okay, what kind of clothing can I wear mm -hmm. that I won't have a heat stroke right. while I'm out there in <laughs> Guyana? Course. And also during that time, um, our whole family, we were out there for missionary work, but mm -hmm. that was missionary work to myself like that was me I see um, wow. getting my own relationship instead of preaching to other people it was mainly for me right. wow praise God that's beautiful and it's beautiful that you and your mother did it together mm -hmm. and I just think about myself and my mother we decided um, that we were going to go plant-based well actually vegetarian we transitioned from vegetarianism to plant-based but we decided to do that together and that made it so much easier because now we were accountability partners. Mm -hmm. We were accountable to each mm -hmm. other. So if one was weak, we could rely on mm -hmm. the other one. You know, and I was 12 at the time. So it was so important that my mother and myself were able to do it. So I know that was a source of strength yes. and support for you to be able to do it with your mom. Yeah. So Paris, what about you? How did you first um, hear about dress reform and what was your reaction? Yes. So... I heard about it through the evangelism videos that you guys used to do in Orlando. Um, <laughs> so I was watching those videos with my mom, right? Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the way that you guys were dressing, at that time, I wasn't practicing any of those mm -hmm. things. So beholding that, you know, it's, it was a really stark contrast. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really fond of it at first. I was taken aback. We were thinking, my mom and I were thinking, wow, that's how we have to dress. <laughs> that's how we have to dress. Because to us, it looked kind of grannyish. We didn't understand and mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. you know, didn't know how to cater to our own age group. Because okay. the women in those videos were older, mm -hmm. you know. But for us, we had that struggle. So I was about 12 years old when I heard about dress reform. Okay. Um, so it was two different environments. Mm -hmm. So where I was before in the tropics in Jamaica, um, wearing whatever. And then when I go to visit in Florida, then I put on the skirts, okay. and <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. I'm with mom's side of the, of the family, pardon me. So, you know, dad's side, it's more worldly. Mm -hmm. And then mom's side is the present truth. Everybody's already plant-based. Everybody's already doing dress reform. So <laughs> it was Kind two of different hard. Worlds. Yeah. Two, different two different worlds, worlds. yes. Mm -hmm. But and I wasn't you... interested. I wasn't <laughs> really interested at first. Okay, because you probably didn't understand why. Yes. You're just doing it to blend in when you're around yes. that side of the family. And I'm sure we can all identify with mm -hmm. <laughs> That's exactly situations it. like that. But it's good also that you mentioned your mother as well, like Maya. It, so you guys kind of transition together as well? Yes. Okay. And that's, that's very, very important. So mothers out there with daughters, I'm encouraging you um, to follow, practice dress reform, and it's a great encouragement to your daughters, whatever age they may be. And they will hold you accountable because if, if they see you slipping, you <laughs> better believe that your daughters will say, Mom, what are you doing? Right. Yep. You know, <laughs> they'll yep. tell you like it is. I and agree. hopefully vice versa. <laughs> the yes. mothers will tell the daughters when they're slipping. So... So now you guys are at this place. You are young adults, barely out of your teens. I won't put your age out there. But um, <laughs> so now you're at a different place spiritually. So can you take us through some of the transition? I know some of you all did. Um, was it gradual? Was it um, immediate when you, like with, in your case, Maya, when you first studied it and you said, wow, I got it? Or were there some moments where you kind of had to wrestle with it and you found yourself going back? So can you just take us through that? transition yes process. so yes I did study and okay. I was convicted of course mm -hmm. you know I was like okay this is what I need to be doing I started wearing the skirts the dresses but there's always those times 
of weakness, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like some days I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to put a skirt on. Mm -hmm. I just want to be able to put on my sweatpants and walk out the house, mm -hmm. you know, especially like doing grocery runs and stuff. Right. It was more difficult for me now because I have to figure out, okay, what am I going to wear to the mm -hmm. grocery store? And before it was easy. I just slipped on some sweats and just left the house. Right. Um, but I'll definitely say it's a blessing because it makes you care more about your appearance. That's true. And, Very um, true. Well, I'll answer this later, but um, it just makes you care more about your appearance, um, cleanliness, you mm -hmm. know, keeping up with yourself. So it was very much gradual for me. Okay. Um, where I'm at now, it's it's fine for me, but Great before stuff. it was gradual, and I would have those moments where um, I wanted to put on pants mm -hmm. or sweats, but at that time I didn't have any pants to put Great on. God. So thank God I didn't have any yeah. pants because I would have put them on. Right. But, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, and that's that's really good. Before we get to Paris as well, I just want to reiterate. Sorry, I feel like I'm <laughs> piggybacking on every question. I'll, we'll move on faster as we go. But um, yeah, if you have those things that are going to tempt you later on, if you have them still in the house, it's best to just dispense with them, get mm -hmm. rid of them, because if you know that you're weak to a certain thing, you have to get rid of those um, items, you know, and so you don't have them readily accessible so in those moments of weakness, you don't find yourself going back. So that point I wanted to highlight as well. So how about you, Paris? Yes, so mine was mainly to blend in. So that, was, mm -hmm. that had to be a gradual process for okay. me. Because I, I was mainly wearing the skirts and dresses to blend in with my mom's side of the family. Mm -hmm. So having not having the Bible studies as yet, um, that prayer time, my personal study time, right. um, that was a struggle. Okay. So, but it did, when I got to study on my own, mm -hmm. I truly understood what it meant to be a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. And Thanks I God. slowly transitioned into putting on, you know, the modest clothing. Um, but it was gradual. Okay. But it was to the point of extremism as well. <laughs> I remember I was wearing a blouse with a cutout in the back, mm -hmm. but I was at home. And I stuffed another shirt in, <laughs> inside <laughs> so you can see my skin. Yes. And my mom, my mom was like, are you being extreme? <laughs> You're being extreme because I was taking it to that level. Mm -hmm. Just, it's still commendable, but you have to know what you're doing at the same right. time. And you still yes. want it to be attractive. So yes. you could have put a sweater over it or put a shirt under it. But, you know, we I grow, we learn as we grow. So, and I think that God um, looks at the motives, you know? Mm -hmm. And I would just ask you a quick follow-up. So since you um, were dressing modestly to fit in with that group, did you find yourself dressing another way to fit in with another group when, we, when you were in other environments? Well, no, because I okay. left that previous environment. Okay. And I no longer had those articles of clothing. I see. Well, praise God. Thank you both for sharing. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you to get real and transparent with us. Some of you, Maya had shared a few of her struggles as did Paris. What were and are some of the struggles and challenges now that you face even um, today, to this day as you are following dress reform? So anyone can go first. I'll answer, okay. <laughs> um, some of the struggles I have now, I wouldn't call it a struggle, but okay. it's just knowing how to put an outfit together okay. and still look my age. I'm about to be 21 in one month. I don't want to look like I'm 40. So it's hard to kind of um, figure out, okay, is this age appropriate for me mm -hmm. to be wearing or does this look too old? Um, you know, I still like to dress attractive. So right. I would just say that's my struggle, just finding clothing because a lot of stuff in the stores we know is, you know, it's not dress reform right. at all. Right. It'll, it'll either be too short or have mm -hmm. like a high slit in yeah. it. So it's just finding the right clothing, and that would be pretty much my only struggle right well, now. Well, praise me. God. That's, if that's your only struggle, that's a, that's a blessing. All yes, right? it would be the same for me as well, okay. trying to pair the items correctly, mm -hmm. especially in the department stores. You know, it's revealing. It's to, you know, flaunt your body girl clothing, mm -hmm. and nothing catered to us, really. Right. Um, I would say one other thing is we have younger children mm -hmm. <laughs> looking like they're our age, mm -hmm. you know, That's true. and they're that dressing in such ways. And I'm thinking they probably think I'm younger than them, you know? <laughs> so right. That's true. That's 
tr I try not to look at it in that way, mm -hmm. but it can be a struggle because it's like, what do I look like to them? But it's not who you look like to others. It's who you look like to Christ. Amen. And when you do Amen. get that down packed, you can find those modest pieces of clothing to mm -hmm. make yourself look your age right. and beautiful in God's eyes. Amen. And yeah. represent him to be a yes. right representative of him. And dress reform, if followed, you know, properly, it, it is very beautiful. It is elegant. You know, there, there will always be detractors and people that will try to, you know, denigrate dress reform. And they'll, even if you look nice, you know, and you're age appropriate, they'll still make comments. But you have to just realize sometimes that the enemy uses people to try to discourage you, you know, and try, to try to get you to go back to a place that you don't want to go. But once you know that you're following a thus saith the Lord, you know, you can stand in in that and you won't be swayed by other people's opinion and what other people have to say. You can stand like Daniel and even Esther. <laughs> yes. So, um, all right, um, peers and friends, how did they react when they saw your transition? Because I, uh, did both of you grow up in public school, going to public schools? Yes. But I yes. guess your transition was probably after the school years. But anyway, but some of your peers, friends, and even other church members that knew you when you were dressing like them and like, you know, the world, how did they react when they saw you dressing differently all of a sudden? All right. Well, since I'm no longer in that environment mm -hmm. anymore, I can't really speak to that. So okay. I would have to see how it goes down mm -hmm. when I return. But <laughs> I haven't gotten any feedback as yet. Okay. Um, I did, I, as you said, we grew up in public school. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted, I think it was eighth grade, it was when COVID happened while I was in school. So I was in eighth, 11th grade, I mean, okay. not eighth grade, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not okay. eighth grade, 11th grade was when COVID happened mm -hmm. for me. I was, I think, finishing up 11th grade. Mm -hmm. So during that time, that was when we traveled and stuff like that, and I was mm -hmm. going through dress reform. So nobody knew, you know, that okay. I was transitioning. I nobody knew. It wasn't until now that we came back, and I have my friends, I've known them, them since kindergarten. Wow. So these are friends I've had for a very long time, and they definitely notice the difference okay. when they see me, but I have very, I guess you could say accepting friends. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, why are you wearing that? You know, right. why do you look like that? Instead, they just asked me, oh, you look nice. I, you wear dresses now and stuff, because they didn't expect that from me. Okay. They would never, ever expect me to be wearing a dress. <laughs> so, you know, they were very much accepting. Um, a lot nice. of my friends actually asked me where I got my skirts from. Wow. They like the long skirts That's that beautiful. I wear. So it was de it was definitely a testimony mm -hmm. to um, be able to, you know, show myself like that to them. Right. Witnessing opportunities. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. All right. Um, so do you all notice that males, actually, before we get to that question, let's ask about your family. I think both of you kind of kind of touched on this. Uh, whether or not your families are supportive and both of your families are in present truth So I would imagine the answer is yes, and how has that helped you the support of your immediate family members? well Okay <laughs> I'd say it's been a huge encouragement mm -hmm. because even my dad <laughs> he calls me Ellen White sometimes <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's like little Ellie Ellen White, mm -hmm. but that's not just in dress. It's also in character right and overall so is you can't be dressing one way and then Back your life another. isn't uniform mm -hmm. you have to be line upon line precept upon precept mm -hmm. in yep. every area right a total um christian sanctified yes. holy as mm -hmm. paul says mm -hmm. all right um <laughs> my family of course is accepting we're all present truth mm -hmm. um I would say, you know, my brothers, of course, you know, they're brothers. Yeah. So they'll tease me sometimes if I put on something. And I, I guess it kind of keeps me in check, too. Okay. Because, yes, I, you can dress modest, but sometimes it might look a little bit too mm -hmm. much. So my brother would be like, they'll what are you, you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> they'll ask me, what are you wearing before I leave the house? So um, they're very accepting, though. I okay. appreciate my family. I'm very grateful for them well, to, um, you know, be supporting me and my mother, of course, because mm -hmm. we're, we're both going through this together, together. still. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that's beautiful. And immediate family, do they treat you any differently or do they comment on the differences? Those that may not necessarily be in um, present truth, but they may be nominal. Have they ever made any comments about um, your dressing, whether positive or <laughs> negative? <laughs> um, 
cousin. I have a aunt. cousin that okay. me and him are very close. That's my favorite cousin. Okay. But he's told me, <laughs> he's told me, he's like, you look like a Muslim. He's told me that before. <laughs> he's told okay. me that before that I look like a Muslim. And it was funny That's to me. That's a good me. compliment. You know, though. I didn't That's, mind the compliment because, yeah. you know, it, it shows at least I'm covered. Right, so, exactly. Um, but he's made that comment to me. But I just told him, like, you know, I don't wear pants and things mm -hmm. like that anymore. So you're going to see me covered, right. you know. And that was just it. It was just a little petty comment okay. that he made. <laughs> well, praise God. Praise God. Paris, anything from you? Well, <laughs> they haven't said it to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the juicy topics. <laughs> all right, do you all notice that males treat you differently um, now that you're dressing modestly? If so, how? Because we know that men of the world, unfortunately, they say that men are, they're, they're attracted by what they see. And that's why a lot of the women out here in the world, especially even young people, like Paris said, they're dressing, you know, dressing it very immodestly, revealingly. And they're doing it to get attention right. from males. And a lot of the males, that's what they like. That's what they want to see. But since you are dressing modestly, do you notice that males are treating you differently or you don't really pay attention to, to that? Um, I would say growing up, since I, you know, I wasn't obviously wearing skirts and dresses, but mm -hmm. because I, used, I did used to cover myself a lot because I did not want any male attention at all. Okay because I was always around men. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want that kind of attention on me. So I used to cover myself up when I was okay. younger. And not until I started getting a little bit older now, I started dressing a different way. Mm -hmm. um, I started dressing a little bit more revealing. And of course you would get those, you know, snarky comments from men mm -hmm. if you might be walking on and the street. Looks as well. And looks, of mm -hmm. course. Um, so I went through that, but now that I've changed, I, I realized that, you know, men are more courteous to mm -hmm. you um, if you walk in the store, they'll hold the door for you. Have a good day, ma'am. They'll yeah. say stuff like that. That's true. But it's never anything that's demeaning or, or negative. Um, negative towards me. So I Praise do appreciate God. that. It's definitely a difference. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. I would say no. Okay. Um, I, would, I still receive certain compliments, but it's more respectful, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm covered, I'm decent. Right. Not like what they see in the world. It's different. Mm -hmm. So... Mine would be a no. <laughs> okay. Praise God. And the thing is, sometimes when males compliment a woman on their looks, if they're dressing revealingly, they're not complimenting you about your character right. or anything yes. like that. They're complimenting, oh, you look good. Oh, you know, whatever. They'll mm -hmm. say a demeaning comment or what have you. You all have probably heard it, the, some of the women out here. And um, it's not really a compliment. It's no, more, it's, it's, not. it's degrading, really, when they're commenting on parts of your body. And that should really make you feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. but some women they they like that and yeah. they that's more incentive right. for you oh let me show some more let me continue dressing this way but again like you said like you both said i believe that once you're covered um you know people still may be lustful that's mm -hmm. that's with them but at least it won't be on account of you right. you're not causing them to lust or to think thoughts that they shouldn't be thinking or to see things that they shouldn't exactly. be seeing you know and so that's that's very good. So Paris, um, can you talk to us about a singular experience that you've had or a testimony that stands out to you as it relates to dress reform? Yes. So of course, <laughs> like I shared on Christian's channel. Mm -hmm. um, oh, pardon me. Forget that thought. Okay. Yes, at the grocery store again. Mm -hmm. I was in the car park and someone was speeding by, right? And then they slowed down and and yelled. I love your dress. Oh, I like, oh thank you. I, I oh, thought wow. it was some type of drive-by <laughs> or something because they just slowed down and then rolled the windows down <laughs> thinking, what is going on? Right. And they screamed, I love your dress. I'm like, oh, oh wow. thank you, Lord. Because, you know, it's really encouraging mm -hmm. for people to see that different side because they don't really get to, in this society, they right. don't see much of that anymore. Especially from people in you all's age group. It's yeah. like a, an anomaly. When they see yeah. young people, you yes. know, 19, 20, 20, almost 21 years old, dressing, you know, modestly, it's like, wow, you know, there's, there's something different there's about you. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's just a testimony. It's a silent witness to them as well. So praise God. All right, um, now I'm gonna ask you about witnessing opportunities. Has um, your following of dress reform opened up any witnessing opportunities for you? It has definitely for me. Um, I'm currently in massage school. I'm about to be done this month, actually. Praise the Lord. So, yes. 
um, at my school is, you know, it's pretty much women in my class. Mm -hmm. um, but within the first week of me going there, you know, everybody sees I'm wearing a skirt. Mm -hmm. So I've got asked multiple times, are you Pentecostal? Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I figured that would come up. But I just wasn't expecting that so mm -hmm. soon. Um, but I was able to tell them, no, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. What's Seventh-day Adventism? And that's like an open door right there for mm -hmm. you to explain and things like that. Um, there's one girl in particular that I do her hair sometimes, so okay. she comes by me and I do her hair, and she's always asking me questions about church. Oh, What's your church Lord. like? What do you do when you go to church? Mm -hmm. And I'm always able to share with her. I'm hoping one day that she will come to the church, but it's just definitely a testimony. Um, there's an older man there at the school he calls me his favorite dress girl. Aww. Every time I come in, he's like, here comes my favorite dress girl. Aww. So it was definitely um, a witness to oh, those that's people. that's beautiful. And going back to one of your previous answers where mm -hmm. um, you were talking about how you studied it for yourself. Now when those questions come to you, you're, you know, you have something right. to say yes. to them. You can't, you aren't just saying, well, I just do it my just parents because. want right. me to dress, or my church, this is what they teach. This mm -hmm. is what they promote. And that's the thing with a lot of these other religions. I don't know about the Pentecostals, but maybe if they're asked, why do you dress that way? Oh, because I'm Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. And then it yeah. stops there, right. you know, but why do you dress this way? And you're able to elaborate on it and share, you know, from the scripture and just allow the Holy Spirit to lead, you know, that conversation. And sometimes it'll lead to other questions, mm -hmm. you know, about the Sabbath or other things. And it's just beautiful how many doors and witnessing opportunities just representing Christ, you know, in our dress and in our demeanor, as you said, Paris, our character as well, yes. how that opens up so many opportunities to talk to people. We don't even have to go looking for right. people. Exactly. God will send people to us, like they'll roll a window down, and, <laughs> yeah. you know. But um, yeah, how about you, Paris? Yes, so my family came to visit, my aunts and my cousin Monique. Mm -hmm. They came by to visit the house. Um, I wasn't sure how they would react because they're used to seeing me in the pants and the sleeveless. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they can be a little judgy. Okay. They don't want to say too much, mm -hmm. but you can tell what they're thinking. Mm. Right. Just so, by their look. <laughs> yes. So I wasn't too sure what they would say this time. But one day they came downstairs, um, one morning, mm -hmm. they came downstairs and my aunt was in a dress. And my mom's like, what's going on here, you know? <laughs> And she's like, well, I'm just copying you guys. I see Aww. you wearing your skirts and your dresses. And that was a beautiful encouragement to me because I was thinking they were going to judge me mm -hmm. or I would have to switch up a little bit to mm -hmm. suit their needs. But no, they were copying wow. me. So Praise God. I give yeah, God the glory. People take notice. They do. And, yes. um, and hopefully by beholding good things, you yes. know, they mm -hmm. will become changed, Thanks. not just to fit in, but then they'll start asking the questions yes. and then you'll be able to share with them. So that's, that is really beautiful. So now we're going to get to the Bible. What have been some encouraging scriptures or an encouraging scripture that um, continues to encourage you along your dress reform path? I have a few, but okay. I'm just going to read one Okay, for right now. Um, it's in Ma Matthew chapter 16. And it's verses 25, I mean, 24 to 26. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. um, I always use that th that text mm -hmm. mainly for anything I'm struggling with. Okay. Um, but it helped me a lot with dress reform because I had to ask myself that question. Mm -hmm. What do I gain from not doing what God asked me to do, right. from not changing up the way I dress? Mm -hmm. Am I just doing it to be accepted now um, by people or am I um, doing or am I trying to change my dress now because I know that's what's right and what's asked of me from God. Mm -hmm. So I use that scripture to just help me out and um, just keep me on my toes mm -hmm. to just continue with dress reform. Um, anytime I might have a thought like, is it really that serious? Is it mm -hmm. really that important? Mm -hmm. Just go back to that text and remind myself like, no, this is what you need to be doing right. um, in order to be saved. Like right. if you really think about it, like mm -hmm. if you 
disregard what God asks of you, what are you doing? You expect to be in heaven, but you're not doing what you have to be doing here on earth. So. Right. Amen. Beautiful scripture. One of my favorites as well. Okay. All right. I have two. Mm -hmm. One is in Proverbs 31. You know, we oh, all love yes. Proverbs 31. <laughs> Proverbs 31 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Mm -hmm. So when I read that part, far above rubies, mm -hmm. that's something that you cannot estimate. You can't mm -hmm. put a price value on that, you know? Mm -hmm. Only yeah. Christ's blood can. So the compliments that you would gain from men or just anyone who tries to tell you that this is what value is. Mm -hmm. You can remember your, val your value and your price based on the Bible. Amen. Um, it's the Holy Spirit that we need, not the whorish spirits, right? Yeah, <laughs> the Holy right. Spirit, not the whorish yes. spirits. Amen. I have one more in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Mm -hmm. What? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? Mm. Right? So when you think of that value of the ruby, you're not going to go to the museum and see a valued ruby laying on the floor, mm -hmm. just open. Mm -hmm. There's some covering over it, you know? Right. Even if it's clear, because you can't see it if it's darker. Even if it's clear, it's still covered by right. something. Mm -hmm. But yet, we want to expose ourselves mm -hmm. and say we're valuable. You wouldn't be walking around with a million dollars just <laughs> like that. Right. No. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You are worth even much more than a million dollars. Much more than any of that. So. We should be modest, cover ourselves appropriately, and yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah, we're worth so much. We were worth Christ dying for us. You Don't know? discount if, yourself. That's right. Exactly. If, if you were the only person on earth, Christ would have died for you. Exactly. Christ would have died for you. So that's our value. That's the value of each soul. But um, now we've come to the time for you to share your closing words with our ladies. I want you to direct this to... People in your age demographics, maybe teenagers, young ladies in their early 20s like you all are, and what would you share with them to encourage them? Maybe they haven't started their journey, maybe they're on their journey, but they're struggling. What can you say to them that will encourage them along the way? Um, I would say if you're watching this and, you know, maybe this is your first time hearing about dress reform, um, be careful not to let self, you know, take over and immediately rebel like I did. Um, I would say definitely listen to it, allow the Holy Spirit to work with you. Um, do your studying, you know, go watch the videos that Sister Hillary has done over dress reform and inform yourself because you need knowledge. Um, and just continue on if you already have started your dress reform journey. And if you're struggling, you know, talk to someone who also is doing dress reform and let them, you know, give you some courage, I mean, some encouragement and um, I would just say, you know, keep going. God is happy with what you're doing. And don't worry about what man says. Don't worry about what, what people may think because that's not important at the end of the day. You're trying to get to heaven. Amen. Well yeah. said. All right. Yes. Mine would be to know your worth. Going back to what I was saying before, know your worth. Know, you, know who, you, who you are to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And that's by spending time in the word. Um, reading, fasting, and praying, you know, all of those necessary things. So if you don't know your worth, it's very easy for someone to come and t whisper something in your ears. Mm -hmm. And you believe that lie, you try to live that lie, live for others, the applause, but what are you doing for the heavenly master, you know? So find, I know it may be hard depending on where you are, but find your peer your tribe, lionesses, mm -hmm. those rubies around you to encourage you and help you to keep looking towards that prize. Because in this world, <laughs> it's easy to lose focus, mm -hmm. to not know who you are. Because the enemy doesn't want us to know who we are, the name of the Father in our foreheads, to be sealed. Mm -hmm. the, end goal, the end goal is sealing. Mm -hmm. So know your worth and spend that time with Christ. Amen. I couldn't have thought of a better closing 
And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, now you see why the enemy was trying to mm -hmm. throw off this presentation because um, I have truly been encouraged by listening to these young sisters share their testimony and also their encouragement. So please take heed to what was shared, especially their closing words, the scriptures that were shared throughout. And we pray that you, if you have not started on this path of following um, the Lord as it relates to your dress reform, um, go to him, pray, and ask him to give you that desire and to be submissive to him. So until next time, we thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Take care, and we'll see you on the next episode.